What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp uh, plug-in tutorial for you today. So um, in today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use Flowify to create a spiral staircase rail. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is the way Flowify works. So uh, I did an intro to Flowify yesterday and um, it's very particular about uh, the kind of input that you give it. So first of all, you can download Flowify by going to the SketchUp extension warehouse and just searching for Flowify. Um, I'll link to it in the notes below as well. But uh, basically the way that it works is it uh, basically requires a projection face um, a target face and then a pair of lines that go between the two so I'm just gonna show you how that works real quick before we jump into the uh, actual the actual uh, in-depth piece of this tutorial so basically so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a face using curve aloft um, just as kind of an example so now I've got this curving face in here um, so I use the the skinning piece and I just drew an arc along the square and use skinning so basically the way Flowify works is it will take an object that you put on this grid and it will project it onto this piece but in order to do that it requires three things it requires your target mesh which is what you're projecting onto and that needs to be in a group it requires a projection mesh which is basically the uh, the canvas that you draw on top of. So whatever you want to project onto here, you need to draw on here. That also needs to be a group. And then finally, it requires a pair of lines to corners of the object. So in this case, since this is the top corner and this is the top corner, you just need to draw those lines between those corresponding corners, just like this. So you just need to draw a pair of lines between those corners, and then you need to put those in a group. So come in here, click make group, and basically you're telling it, I want you to take an object off of here, project it onto here, and these are the corners. So it gives you kind of a base point. And then all of that needs to be in a group as well. So you have three objects that need to be in a group. Just right click and click make group. And now the way you can test if you've got everything set up properly is you can click on this group and you can come up here to the Flowify toolbar or the Flowify option in your extensions toolbar and you can select impose grid and if you get everything set up properly then Flowify will project a grid onto this object basically saying okay we understand that this object gets mapped onto this face this way and so if that doesn't work like for example if um, if I was to come in here and I was to explode this object right if this wasn't a group in here on the inside, if these were just individual lines, I'd get an error message. So if I come up here and I say impose grid, actually you don't even get an error message, it just doesn't work. Um, sometimes you will get, like if I don't have lines in here and I try to do that, it should give me, there you go, it'll give you an input error. But basically if you come in here and, there we go. Basically, if you come in here and you click impose grid and it doesn't do anything, you don't have it set up right. But now that you have your three objects in here, you can create whatever face you want to map on top of this. Um, that also needs to be in a group. So this object needs to be in a group like this. And then in order to make this work, you're going to select your group of three. You're going to do a shift click and you're going to select the object you want to map, which is this object. Come up here and click Flowify. And you can see what that does is that um, that projects your object onto that face and it kind of bends it around the face. So anyway, that's kind of the basics of the way this works. So let's go ahead and jump into this stair thing. Um, so first thing you're going to do, and I'm not going to get super in-depth on spiral stair creation. I will probably make a video next Monday on creating a spiral stair. But the way that you're going to do this is you're going to draw a 12-sided circle. Uh, you're going to draw the radius to be however wide you want your steps to be so in this case i want my steps to be three feet wide so now you've got this 12-sided circle well now what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to split this up along these faces so that you've got one object in here that um so you've got one object in here that's going to act as a step and then you're going to erase the rest of your circle and then double click on this object click make component and just call it step and now we're going to copy that in a circle 12 times. So to do that, just activate the, select your object, activate the rotate tool, 
and just rotate this in a circle. Remember to hit control to put it in copy mode. And then just type in times 11 because you want to make 11 extra copies of this in addition to the one you already had. And remember, since these are components, you can go ahead and give them a, you can give them a height. So in this case, make the height whatever you want the height between your steps to be. So if you want people to step up, um, if you want people to step up six inches um, between each step, then go ahead and make this six inches. We're going to adjust the height of the step later, but right now we're setting the height, um, the height that people will actually step up. So in this case, I think I'm going to say that each step is six inches, just for the, uh, just for the sake of this uh, demonstration. So once you've done that, you're going to select everything in this group, use the move tool to make a copy up, and then just type in times 12, because you, actually times 11. And that's gonna give you this whole, this whole solid thing in here. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come through here and we're just gonna select each step as you go up. So just come in here, do a shift click on all of these. Um, and remember just each one of these will be a step up and you're going to go until you're directly above your last step. So you've got all of these in a circle selected just like this. So now right click on that and put all of those in a group. And then all you have to do now is drag your mouse across this, hold shift and click on your group to unselect that and then you can come in here and delete everything and now you've got a basic spiral shape in here um, so that's that's kind of where we're looking to start so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to create our face uh, our target mesh face and so what you're going to do to create your target mesh face is you're going to come in here and for each step you're going to draw a line up um, as tall as you'd like your actual rail to be so in this case, let's go ahead and call this three foot high, just for the sake of what we're doing. And my stair may be a little shorter than it needs to be, but it's okay for what we're doing right now. And then for each one of these, you're just gonna draw a line up, or you can also copy this. So you can use the move tool in copy mode to just create this along each one. There's probably an extension that lets you do this a little bit faster, but I'll just go ahead and do it this way for right now. And then I'd go ahead and hide this. Uh, you don't need it anymore right now. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw lines. All the way down on the top. So all the way around your spiral. And then you're going to do the same thing back up on the bottom. And you may be able to use the move tool to move these down. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and draw these just like this. And then once you've got this drawn, select all of it, right click and go ahead and put it in a group just like this. So now you've got your kind of spiraling stair rail and it looks like I probably... You know what you're going to do is you're going to draw a six inch line and then you'll draw a line as tall as these other lines which i think was three feet so that way your face continues you can go ahead and reverse these faces if you want to so that the front face is facing outward you can erase this extra line so now you've got your face that's going to act as your kind of target grid in here for flowify so and the way that we're going to do this now is we're going to come out here to the side and we'll just draw this off to the side a ways and then just kind of center it but basically what you're going to do is you're going to draw a rectangle roughly the length of 12 of these segments so roughly 12 times one and a half um, that's going to give you 18 feet so you're going to draw a rectangle that's roughly 18 feet wide same height three feet as your rail that you drew over here and so this is going to be your target face um, or your projection face sorry so you can go ahead and move this over so it's kind of centered just like this but basically the way this is going to work is you're going to put this in a group and then you're going to draw your target lines so in this case 
we're going to draw this line to the top and this line to the bottom right here. But you're basically telling it this corner corresponds to this corner. I got those backwards. Draw this line to this one, draw this line to this one. But it's basically telling you this line corresponds to this corner, this line corresponds to this corner. So whatever you draw here, it's gonna run along your spiral just like this. So then come in here and select your lines, put them in a group. So now you should have your three groups, right? You got your target mesh, you got your direction lines here, and then you got your projection face. So, so put all three of those in a group, just like this. And then to make sure that everything's working the way we want it to work, just come in here to Flowify and click Impose Grid. And you can see how what that did is that should have split this up into 12 or 13 different segments in here. So it's basically just telling you, yeah, we got it. These are corresponding properly. So now that you've got that on here, what you can do is you can draw kind of a canvas on top of it. And then if you want, you can go ahead and hide this for right now. Um, because all we're going to do is we're going to extrude some lines along this length, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, right click on this line and select divide. And I'm probably going to want five strands along the length of this. So divide this into five segments. And then you're just going to use the circle tool and, um, draw a little circle you can use the arrow keys to lock it on the screen axis but draw a little circle just like this probably go ahead and make it into a group you could make it into a component but you're gonna have to explode it later but then just extrude it along the length of this face so go ahead and take it over here and extrude along the length of that face and then just make a couple copies of it with the move tool. So move it up here and then type in times four. So that'll come in here and that'll create your strands that we're gonna use. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a taller top rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it circular still, but then we'll use the scale tool to kind of adjust adjust the way that it looks a little bit. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make that a 24-sided circle just to make it a little smoother. You do have to be a little careful with the number of faces you create in here, but we'll go ahead, we'll put this in a group, we'll erase the center line, we'll scale it down a little bit, and then just extrude that along this length as well. So we'll kind of see how this works, but basically now what you've got is you've got your wire strands in here as well as your top rail. So you're going to go in here, come in here and put those in a group just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger. All right, we'll go ahead and give that a try. So the one thing you are going to have to do is remember you drew this on this face, but now you have to come in here and explode all of these because remember, uh, Flowify doesn't like it wants raw geometry inside the group that it uh, runs along this face right here. So you can go ahead, come in here, and unhide your Flowify geometry now. So all you want to do now is you want to come in here and you want to select the rail that you're trying to make, and then you're going to select this face. And now you should be ready to go because this geometry is all in a group and you've got your other group selected. So just come up here to Flowify and click Flowify. And give it a second because it's bending a whole lot of geometry and all of that. But now if you take a look, you can see it came in here and it bent this all the way along this face right here. So now you've got um, basically f four strands and a top rail on here. So now you can come in here and you can hide your Flowify geometry and you can see you've got this rail that runs all the way up. So we've we've got a spiral staircase rail and I'm going to go back and I'm just gonna adjust this top rail so that it's a little taller. All right, so let's try that again. Flowify, Flowify, give it a second. There we go. I like that better. So come in here, hide your Flowify geometry. So now you've got this, this five strand rail that's running all the way up to the top of this. Um, but it does look a little funky in here because there's no post. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to edit these components um, in order to have a post. So just come in here and draw 
a little circle just like this. You can run that up and you do have to be a little bit careful that you don't make the post so big that it looks funky running into this piece right here. So there's a couple different ways you could go about that. You could just run this down a little bit. So probably what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to model a little circle right here that kind of runs into this handrail. And it's cheating a little bit, but basically I just want it to run into this rail so that there's no gap. Um, so that there's no gap in here, so it looks kind of natural. But you can see since these are components, that went ahead and edited that for each one of them. And you can come in here if you want and you can adjust this so that it runs down to the bottom of your step just like that to give you this complete look and then the last thing you can do if you want to is you can come in here well I guess there's two other things that you can do so first thing you can do is if you want to create a center post on this stair just like this you can just draw a circle and just extrude it up just like that. And so if you like the center post look, you can do that. The other thing you can do with your steps is you can come in here and you can edit the components so that they're not as thick as the whole rise. So if I extrude this to three inches, just like this, and then I come in here and I push this piece, I think that creates a little bit cooler spiral staircase look. Um, because it gives you a little gap between these you can see through them but now you've got this kind of cool five strand wire piece running up through all these pieces so i really like the way that, that turned out and you can also come in here with each one of these components if you want and hide these lines um, using the erase tool in hide mode so anyway that's where i'm going to wrap this video up i do apologize it got a little bit long uh, it was kind of hard to talk about how to create a spiral staircase, how Flowify works, and go through this all in one tutorial, but I, I like the way that it turned out. So if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe for new SketchUp content every week. Uh, if you really like what I'm doing here, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Um, that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. So in any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.